quarters of a pound lighter at the official weigh-in. He is an inch and a half shorter as the referee Davy Pearl calls him to the center of the ring. He does, however, Laporte, enjoy a two-inch advantage in reach. The referee, Davy Pearl, out of Las Vegas, Nevada. He does not have a vote. The judges who will cast the ballots are these. Harry Gibbs of England, Sid Nathan of England, and Angel Custodio Tovar of Venezuela. The referee does not have a vote. Those three gentlemen will make the decision on who wins this championship fight. And we are ready to go with round number one. The champion Laporte comes out in a hurry and Castillo comes back with a sharp right hand to the jaw of the champion. So they start quickly. As we suggested some few minutes ago in our scene set from the Roberto Clemente Coliseum, this could be one of the better fights of the year. Both are very active. The harder hitter of the two figures to be Laporte the champion. The quicker of the two figures to be Castillo. Both men have scored here in this very first round with sharp right hand. Hard right by Laporte. And that shook Castillo. Ruben looks now at the champion and will need to get a little more movement. He comes back with his own right hand, but countering shortly is Laporte with another right hand. And some debris has been thrown into the ring. So now the Somebody's throwing some paper cups up into the ring, wadded up already. And the referee, Davey Pearl, kicking it out of the way. To the body goes Castillo, to the head, Laporte. Both men scoring here in the early going. Scheduled for 12 rounds under the WBC rules. And on the exchange inside, both score heavily. is in the corner of Ruben Castillo and a hard left hook by Castillo. The champion back into the ropes, but he's all right. But it was a wicked left that Castillo threw in there. And it looks to me like that uh, Raul Garza, uh, Ricardo Maldonado, and Carlos Madrid, along with Dundee, have decided they might let Castillo trade a little more here in the early going of the fight. And both men have landed some heavy stuff in this first round. Howie Elbert, the manager of the champion Laporte, and Carlos Espada is the trainer. One moving back to San Juan from New York. A hard left hook by Castillo. Oh, boy, that one was lethal. But the champion shook it off. They're both loading up here in the very first round. Knockouts for Castillo, 13 knockouts for Laporte. Laporte has had 25 fights. Castillo has had 60. 15 seconds to go, roughly, in the first round. The first round is over. And it was a wicked first round for both men. Yesterday, in talking to the two fighters, I asked them about what sort of tactics they would bring into the ring, what kind of strategy, and this is what they had to say. First, the champion. We're going to move a lot in these uh, lateral movements. Stick, 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 get your punches off and get out. You know, because he, he is a banger and he is strong. So we got to defeat that by moving on him. Well, he's a good fighter, and... He's a counter puncher. He boxes. So I have to put pressure on him. Uh, he's going to be running all the time. So I'm ready to throw punches all through from 1 to 12 rounds. If I sound a little unsettled, I am, because there has just been a raging ruckus right behind us. And it took the better part of 15, 20 policemen to control it. But I think they finally got it under control as we go down to round number two. Both men scoring heavily in the first round. The champion doing pretty much what he said he was going to do, but Castillo surprised us a little bit by standing in and uh, trading. And 
Rubin was a little bit low that time as the blow was deflected off. He went for the body, and the champion's defense deflected it off. There's a short, sharp right hand by Laporte. Good right hand, followed by a left hook by Castillo. Both of them sharpshooters. Both can sting you. Combination by Castillo, left and a good short right. That right hand by the challenger picked off of the champion. Sid Nathan of England, Angel Custodio Tovar of Venezuela. And the Clemente Coliseum in San Juan is just about full. And it's a pretty good tab for this, too. Running around 60 bucks for the floor. Laporte has become very popular. It's coming back to San Juan from New York and winning the championship and stopping Mario Miranda as the successor. Salvador Sanchez. Neither man has landed anything uh, of consequence so far here in round number three. Certainly nothing like they had going in rounds one and two. Good stiff left hand by Castillo right there to the face of the champion. Combination by Castillo. Through round two, he was the busier. Here in round three, he's been the busier. Remember, this is a WBC fight. It goes 12 rounds. No more 15. Castillo got there first and took all of the sting out of uh, the counter from Laporte, the champion. Laporte in the red, Trunks, and Castillo in the white. Rubin now living in uh, Tucson, Arizona. Right hand coming over the top by Laporte, missing to the back of the head.
Castillo. He's landed about three of those. Hard right dug to the body by the champion. The right hand as Laporte tried to load it up, and Castillo took it on the side of the head, picking off part of it with his left glove. So while it appeared terribly dramatic, it didn't have all that much impact when he got there. About 10 seconds to go. That quick left hand of Castillo scoring well for him here in round number three. Here we go, round four. The challenger having been the busier in rounds two and three. And might very well have moved ahead on the scorecard. Laporte, a couple of times in the third round, trying to load up the big right hand, and each time was just a little late with it. Castillo accepted as perhaps the better boxer of the two coming into the fight. And it's long been his custom in, in some of his big fights to box his way into the lead. He did it against uh, Arguello. He had the lead over Alexis before losing in the 11th round. And against Sanchez, uh, he led well into it before losing a close decision. That was a 15-rounder. These are two outstanding featherweights. And for just a moment, he went flat-footed, and Laporte just popped him with that right hand. But Castillo fights right back. Goes hard with a left hook to the body of the champion. dramatically there that Castillo does not want to get himself into a flat-footed posture. He wants to stay nimble where he can move. A little movement sometimes can take much of the sting out of a loaded punch. Like that, for example, that right hand from Laporte just grazing the head of the challenger as he moved away from it. About a minute to go in round four. There's a good left and right by Castillo, and then Laporte comes right back with his own. Castillo starting to move a little more. Laporte just going at it. in the red trucks lashing out with that loaded right hand. Big exchange at the bell. End of round four. Here we go to round number five. And the champion Laporte scoring heavily in the last minute of that fourth round. The most concentrated action we've seen since the first round from the champion. The man who has helped train Laporte to this world championship, Emil Griffin, a five-time world champion himself. And Emil has ab been absolutely beside himself so far. <laughs> he wants the champion, Emil does, to go more to the body. Work on Castillo, try to slow him down a little bit. Castillo using that sharp left hand very effectively. Castillo first to the left, then to the right. Not a whole lot of movement, but just enough. Just missed with the right hand. And 
took two quick lefts to the face. Over the top comes the right hand, and Castillo fights back with a combination. The best punch of the combination, a right hand to the side of the head. And digs hard to the body, alerting our local stations now that at the end of this round, we'll take a station break. Busier than the champion. This is round five, scheduled for 12. With right hand by the challenger. Ruben Castillo. He hooks that left and throws that short straight right. And he's done very well with that particular combination. featherweight championship fight the champion won Laporte in the red trunks the challenger Ruben Castillo in the white trunks a right hand to the body by Castillo very close fight just about as good as you want between these 126 men. featherweight championship. In the champion's corner, concern. They want more action from him. They want him to get busier. Well, Castillo comes out and immediately goes to a combination that works for the head of the champion. But it appears now that uh, Juan Laporte has heard his corner and is determined to try to get more active. But so far, the busier of the two fighters has been Ruben Castillo. He's been particularly effective with combinations to the head early, and in the last three rounds has worked well to 
the body. And now Laporte comes out with an opening uh, combination, but has since gone sort of back into that uh, one clock circumstance. He threw the right hand that time and caught Castillo with it. Now he's trying to run him into the ropes and pin him up, but instead is tied up by Castillo, and that flurry by the champion gets the crowd up. Here at the Roberto Clemente Coliseum in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Now Laporte is busier. This is round seven, scheduled for 12. This is the busiest Laporte has been since the first round. a break that allows Castillo the boxer to reassume control one came out quickly trying to take command of this round and for about 45 seconds looked like he might do it now he is slowed again solid punch. Now the right hand lead is beginning to pay some dividends for the champion. There it is again. Halfway point of the round. Maybe the best round of the fight for the champion. for the champion. Seven was a big round for the champion Laporte and the challenger Ruben Castillo was roundly chewed out in the corner by Angelo Dundee. They were shouting at each other. Angie saying do you want the title and uh, Castillo shouting right back yes. Now let's see what he can do to try to get it. Into the question, but uh, Castillo had to be ahead on most of the cards going into that seventh round. But the seventh round was a good one for Laporte, and it tightened everything up considerably. You don't win a championship by running either, and I am quite sure that uh, Ruben Castillo, having had two title opportunities already, knows full well. That you do have to go out there. There's a good right hand by Laporte. And the left hook by Laporte. Another left hook by Laporte. Those were picked off by Castillo. The right hand missed. Good left hand by Castillo. Another right hand by the champion, and Castillo comes back with a right hand. A hard left hook by Laporte. That hurt Castillo. A right hand. The crowd is roaring now. And Laporte seems to draw strength from the din that comes cascading down on him. But now the challenger, as plucky as any, comes fighting back. A hard right hand by Laporte. A left hand by the champion. Not a good place for Castillo. Ruben Castillo digging the left of the body. Very close fight. Round eight scheduled for 12. WBC featherweight championship. The champion Laporte in red. The challenger Castillo in white. Both a little wild in that exchange. Inside combination.
into the head by Castillo. Ruben now beginning to show some marks from the fight. The champion has a little mouse in the corner of his right eye, just underneath it. Good left hand with the body by Castillo. We've gone through eight rounds, and the crowd is standing and roaring. Angelo Dante in the challenger's corner. Over in the I other corner, it is Elio Griffith right. from Howie no, 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 Albert. No, 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 no. Hey, left, go right. What the, what it's doing amazing you, you can hear anything the way this crowd is shouting. Their man, the native son, coming to life in the seventh and eighth round and scoring with heavy shots. You see the combination there by the challenger, but then that left hook by Laporte stung. Castillo roving back into the ropes. We've been able to get off the ropes and get some balance back, but it was the second successive big round for the champion, and Laporte comes out winging here in round nine. Exchange and now they step back to take a breath. Round seven and eight rough ones for Ruben Castillo. those combinations inside going use his speed of foot a little more throwing the greater number of punches here in the first minute of round nine Castillo born in Billings Montana raised in Bakersfield California now lives in Tucson Arizona Laporte the champion born here in Puerto Rico moved to New York City has now come back to San Juan as a champion to the head there. The Forte, for just a moment at least, has slipped back into the pattern of letting Castillo get off first. Right hand comes over the top and whistles to the jaw of Castillo and may have hurt him. He sags back into the ropes and he looks wobbly. Forte slamming him into the ropes. Hard left hook. The crowd thundering. A wild exchange at the bell. Every once in a while. Next Sunday's edition of ABC's Wide World of Sports features the Ironman Triathlon World Championship. And note that next Sunday's show will begin at 4 Eastern, 3 Central, and Pacific, and will be a special expanded two hour edition. All right, our wide world presentation today is a dandy. We are going now to round number 10 of this WBC featherweight championship fight. Juan Laporte, a big closing minute of that ninth round.
as he staggered uh, Castillo. And he's swarming him. And Ruben Castillo is in trouble. Laporte is swarming all over him. He apparently could not shake off the impact. Started first off by an overhand right hand to the jaw. And then an accumulation of punches on the ropes in the last 30 seconds. Castillo still looks uncertain and unsure. And right now he looks tired as he sags back into the rope. And that is not where he wants to be. Laporte letting go now with everything he has got. And Baby Pearl is going to call a standing eight count. It is a standing eight count by the referee, Baby Pearl. Castillo in trouble. He looks tired. Laporte now comes back after him. Ruben Castillo trying to hang on. It is up to the discretion of the referee as to whether or not he wants to apply a standing eight count. And David Pearl applied it right there. It is a new rule in the World Boxing Council. It is a good rule because this has been a fight by two valiant young men. And David Pearl simply did not want to take away the opportunity from Ruben Castillo. One of the smartest rules they've had in professional boxing yet. Now Castillo trying to get his second win. The champion got him back into the rope and is continuing to pummel him inside. Doesn't want to give him any time to get his breath. Laporte stays on top of Castillo. We're in round 10. The champion is in control right now. as one came charging out of the corner at the outset of the round he sensed that Castillo had not shaken off the impact of that big flurry of the ninth round and sure enough he had not and as he sagged back into the ropes the champion just went to work on him and he was pounding away the referee Davy Pearl stepping in to apply and standing eight count to the challenger the fight then continued but that round belongs solely and totally to the champion Juan Laporte. Round 11. And Ruben Castillo now. Still looks a little weary. He's got a bit of a mark under his left eye. see that it's going to favor either one. They've just simply gone at each other with all they had. 
with the ninth and tenth rounds, big rounds for the champion Laporte. They actually it started to turn in the seventh round. there a little bit too. Both, both of them had blows slide low. The bumping of the head as well. And now a combination inside of the head by Castillo. And out in the champion's corner, Ali Albert, Carlos Espada, Emil Griffith, all counting at Laporte. Don't let him get in control again. Don't let him start getting off first again. Keep control of it. Quick right hand lead by the champion, Laporte. Both men now showing some fatigue. Combination to the head again by the challenger Castillo. Ruben in the white. Laporta in the red. Laporte now slows down again for a moment and goes flat footed. Closing down with 10 seconds to go in round number 11. And Ruben Castillo apparently has regained all of his faculties, and round 12 ought to be something. of the round so damaging for the challenger. Castillo trying to load up with a combination to the head. 
I don't think his punches have the sting. Here's a left hook, and Ruben Castillo goes down from a left hook to the head by Laporte. Davy Pearl takes a good long look at him. His eyes are glazed. His body is tired. His mind is weary. I don't think Davy Pearl's going to let him take much punishment there on the rope. Only a half a minute to go. You don't want to stop a title fight of this quality. You'd like to see it go the distance. Laporte crowding into the rope. Castillo sliding away and trying to hang on. Down into the final seconds of the fight. Academic, perhaps, but it's worth the drama, the announcement. El campeón, Raúl Juan Laporte. Unanimous decision for Juan Laporte. He started turning it around in the seventh round, and he finished big. He put the Castillo down with a big right hand at the end of round 11, had him down with a left hook. In the final round, he uh, had a standing eight count, and he hurt him back in the ninth round. So he finished big, and here is the final knockdown, a left hook to the side of the head. The legs gave way on Ruben Castillo, and he fell down, but he was noble in defeat. So Juan Laporte of San Juan, Puerto Rico, is successful in his first title defense as the WBC featherweight champion. The crowd singing. Having champions is nothing new to Puerto Rico. They've had a lot of them. And judging from some of the young people that are coming out of here, they're going to have some more. This young man, Juan Laporte, moving back to Puerto Rico from New York City, is right now their hero. Unanimous decision for Laporte. Travel arrangements made through, promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. That's what friendly skies are all about. It's a good night from San Juan as Laporte retains his title. Excitement of a major heavyweight division.